would like to welcome everyone in the room and everyone watching online to Jesus Image Church. Welcome. Jesus is in the room today. I remember when we first started meeting together, our, our first post that we ever put out was, Jesus will be there and that is enough. And that's what I feel for tonight, that He's here and it's enough with no other motive, no other agenda, that Jesus is in the room. So if we can just lift our hands and we say, Jesus, we believe that in your presence, all things are possible. In your presence, healing is possible. In your presence, restoration is possible. So we look to you, Jesus, not look to those around us, but we know that you are here in the room and that is enough. Can we just look to Jesus just for a minute? We're not here to observe. We're here to step into the river of the Lord. We're here to step in tonight. We thank you, Jesus, and we welcome you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.
for his blood. Thank him for his mercy. Thank him for his goodness tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. Thank you for the cross. The nails in your hands, the nails in your feet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for his blood. You're all together, love. All together, word. All together, one. For two. Here I am one more time. Here I am. 
Fill this room with a song from your heart.
begin to him you're still my first love only you you're still my only one jesus you're still my first love you're still
said he's still the only way so we're here tonight lord to tell you you're the only way you're the only way you're the only way and one day every knee will bow one day every tongue confess that jesus christ is lord
worship Him, worship Him.
For your blood. Jesus, we thank you for the scriptures. Jesus, we thank you for breath in our lungs. A house, car, children, protection, life. We say thank you to you and you alone. We love you, Jesus. 
Come on, why don't we thank him together collectively in here? Jesus Christ, we thank you. We thank you for you. Thank you for your Father. We thank you, Holy Spirit. In your beautiful, precious name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's say it together. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Man, the Lord is here. Like, he is here. Why don't we thank our worship team and our choir who stand for an hour and a half. We love you guys. Thank you, God. You guys could be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I get the, the honor to talk to you about Jesus. Um, how many of you guys know this, this life is super, super quick? It just is. Scripture talks about it, how it's but a vapor, but a mist, uh, you know, depending on what translation you read. But either way, it is, it is quick. In comparison to eternity, it is literally a blink of an eye. I remember I, I was in a room and I switched the light off and on just super quick. And if you ever did that as a kid, try to see if you get it to stay lit, but um, I did it, and I remember the Lord immediately told me, that's, that's this lifetime in comparison to eternity. It's so fast. And most of my life, I lived for this life. Without seeing through that eternal perspective, and when we live for this life, there's things that we revert to that only satisfy us and fulfill us in this lifetime or but a moment. That's not why we're alive and not why we were created. I'm gonna read just briefly John chapter 18. This is about Peter's denial, but in verse 25 it says, meanwhile, as Simon Peter was standing by the fire warming himself, they asked him again, are you not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it, saying, no, I'm not. But one of the household slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had just cut off, asked, don't you see that out there in the olive grove, weren't you the one with Jesus? Again, Peter denied it, and immediately the rooster crowed. And we know that Peter denied Jesus three times, but I felt it today as I was reading this that there's some of you standing by a fire that you were never created to stand by. That you're warming yourself with a fire that's only momentary. But later on in scripture, what's beautiful about this is Peter was restored by a fire. At the Sea of Tiberias, Jesus is standing at the, at the seashore and he's making, cooking some fish and has bread and we know the restoration of Peter comes. What's crazy about that is Jesus says, Simon, son of Barjona. He didn't call him Peter. He called him Simon. How many of you guys know God's a restorer? And I feel that he's going to restore the years of that the canker worm has stolen in this room with some of you tonight. And he's going to bring you back to innocence, to purity, to that place where sin seems foreign to you and not normal to you. He's going to give you his nature. If you really think about what the, the cross has done, that, I mean, our shame, our guilt, our life filled with sin, our life distant from Jesus, the cycles of sin, the, the fears that come with a life wayward of the king, all of that. And when we just say yes to him, he gives us his life the righteous, holy son of God. Like what an exchange. That's why it is good news. See, he's not here to judge you guys. Scripture says that mercy triumphs over judgment. The merciful king is waiting for you today. 
and he restores better than what was. He doesn't just take you back to that point where you messed up. He restores you back greater than what was because that's who he is. It's his nature. He did it in my life. The moment I said yes to him, he restored years of me forfeiting it. Years of me wayward. And in a moment, he restored it and said, you have my life. Here you go, son. That is Jesus. It's who he is. This is why it is good news. Just like Pastor Michael said, it is greater than good news. It's beyond. It's incomprehensible. And he's here to do that today. And what Jesus goes on to tell Peter by this fire says, do you love me? Do you love me? Scripture says if we obey his commandments, he knows that, that it's proven that we love him. Can you ask yourself that question? Coming straight from the Lord, do you love me? He's here to restore. He's here to redeem. He's here to make new. I feel it. The redeemer, the kinsman redeemer is in the room. If I could have every head bow and every eye close. Holy Spirit, I pray you breathe upon hearts and minds in this room. There may be some of you in this room that feel like you forfeited your future because of mistakes. Or you're in this room and you feel like, man, I keep messing up every two or three months. When is this ever going to end? The blood of Jesus is enough. The cross is enough. You can't fix yourself up. You can't clean yourself up. You can't refrain from sin long enough. Only Jesus Christ and him alone can do it. And I feel restoration of years in this place. If that's you and you're in this room, and you said, I need Jesus. I need to encounter him again. The kinsman redeemer. I'd just love for you to slip up your hand and say, yes, that's me. Thank you, Jesus, all across this room. Thank you, Lord. Secondly, you may not be living a life of sin, but your heart has been far from him. Maybe the fires that you're warming yourself up are just anxiety or Maybe it's distraction. Maybe it's religious repetition. And he wants to restore you by the fire of heaven tonight. If that's you in this room and say, I, I want first love again. I want to burn with a holy fire. I'd love for you just to slip up your hand real briefly. Say, that's me. Thank you, Jesus. If I could have everybody stand up in the room. And if you said yes to him, in one of those two calls. I just want you guys to come down here quickly. Come out of your seats and come down here. Come on, let's, let's thank Jesus for every one of these people. Father, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. He's here to make new. He's here to restore. He's here to redeem. with mercy in his eyes and love in his eyes. It's who he is. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. The kinsman redeemer is in the room. The great exchange, his life for yours and yours for his. The one who is righteous. The one who is holy and blameless in a moment makes new. Come on, let's pray together as a family in the, in the room and let's stretch our hands toward everybody who's come up here tonight. I would love for all of us in the room just to say a simple prayer. And in this prayer, we're talking straight to the King. I pray you look into his eyes of love tonight his eyes of mercy tonight. Let's all say this together as a family. Say, Jesus, I come to you. I give you everything. I give you my anxieties, my worries, my fears, my sins, my past, 
I give it to you. Jesus, I believe that you will redeem me, that you have redeemed me. I believe that you died on the cross for me, that you rose again on the third day for me. I believe that you ascended to the right hand of the Father. And I believe that you're coming back again to rule and reign. Jesus, today I am born again into your hands. I deny myself. I pick up my cross and I follow you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, let's thank the King for every salvation. Father, we thank you. You are so good. Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Everything becomes new today. And this life of following Jesus looks like something daily. I've heard it said it's not just the great expression, great confession, but the great expression. It's a life lived unto Jesus. And every day we encourage you guys to open up this amazing book, the scriptures, the holy word of God. It is the only book that you can read it with the author every single day. The Holy Spirit, he now lives and dwells inside of you. The one who wrote this lives in you. It's amazing. Number two is that we pray daily. Is we get alone with the Lord and, and just love him and talk to him just like you did up here right now. Because he's listening. And he is the word, so he is forever speaking. And number three is that we get baptized in water. And you guys could actually sign up right outside of these doors right here. When you guys leave, there's a booth. It's a new believer's booth. You guys could sign up, and we will baptize you right here. And every... Uh, memory or every stain of yesterday's mistake in the, bapt the waters of baptism are removed. The old life is severed. And we get to partake in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And number four is that we get connected to a church, get connected to a, just believers that love Jesus. Scripture says iron sharpens iron. And we're, we're a church here. I, I said it before. I love this church. It's an amazing church because I go here. I know it. I promise. But if you live maybe somewhere outside the state, get connected to a church that believes the whole Bible and is led by the Holy Spirit. And number five is, and we're going to pray this together, is that we are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Bill Johnson said, he is in me for, for my sake and he's upon me for the sake of others and that you guys would be witnesses because you witnessed him here tonight you have seen him so you can tell others about who you've seen and who you talk to it's the Christian life and let's stretch our hands everybody in the room we're gonna just pray over each and every one of these and we're just gonna believe God that he's gonna come and I even pray that for me I pray that for you guys sitting down even those watching online that he baptized us and closed us with himself afresh and anew. So Holy Spirit, as a family tonight, we ask that you come, the great baptizer. I pray you baptize him, the Holy Spirit and in fire. Every one of these precious people that have come up here, Jesus, we pray that they tangibly feel you and know you. Father, I thank you that they are witnesses unto the ends of the earth. That they will forever be orators of the gospel with clarity, boldness, and authority. Fire, Father, I pray that fire be shut up in their bones, Lord Heavenly Father, that they cannot contain it, that they have to tell somebody about you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the empowerment of you. That is not by might, that is not by power, but it is by your spirit, Lord. Father, for these are the sons of God, those who are led by God. So I thank you that they are led by you in everything that they do, Holy Spirit. 
sons and daughters of the wind. We love you, Lord, in your precious, beautiful name. Amen. Amen. Come on. Let's thank Jesus for every one of these yeses to him tonight. God, we thank you. Come on, let's welcome him back, church. Scripture says that heaven is full of joy in this moment. And so we say yes and amen to every one of them that said yes to you tonight, Jesus. We thank you in your precious, precious, beautiful name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Why don't we welcome, yeah, Jessica as she comes up here. Come on. You stay up here, Ryan. Um, if I could have the teams that just got back. We sent some teams, and we want to share some testimonies of what the Lord did. So if you guys could welcome up some of our team that went to the border of Ukraine. Were you in the choir? I was looking for you. She was in the choir. Um, so this is Esther. She runs our children's department, as you guys know. We love Esther, AKA Mother Goose. She's amazing with children. And this is Blake, he's a second year. He's amazing. And Colleen, she's also a second year. And of course you guys know Ryan. And yes, give it up for Ryan. The poor choir, you, do you guys wanna go sit down? Or do you just like standing up here? Because it, it looks cool. All right, you guys can go sit down. I love you. Give it up for the choir. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> okay. So as you guys know, um, the situation going on right now, you know, we just need to keep praying. We need Jesus. He's the only hope. And so we as a ministry, we always get behind uh, people that are hurting. We will always do that. And we knew that our good friend Ben Fitzgerald was there. So we as a ministry sent an offering to help. And then Michael said, you know what? I want to send a team. I want to get in the mix and help people. And we were just saying recently, we felt like God was going to open the door for missions for Jesus Image. And I guess it's begun because this amazing team right here, I called Ryan and Jenna, I think a day before you guys actually flew out. And I'm like, this is what we're feeling. What do we do? And Ryan, you had a dream. Will you share what the Lord showed you? Yeah, about a about a year ago, I had a dream, and in the dream, um, I was with a bunch of Jesus School students, and we were flying in a plane, and, and I knew that we were going into a place where there was just conflict, where there was war. There was, I remember seeing missiles flying over the plane, so I knew that's where we were landing into, um, and I was with just a few Jesus School students, and I remember Pastor Michael called me on the phone while I was flying, and he was giving me specific directions, um, what to do on the grounds, and that actually came to pass. He did call me the next day, and he was giving me specific direction. It was just wild of what the Lord was doing. So when uh, Jessica called us, um, I was like, I, I have to go. Like, it just, uh, I can't say no to this for sure, so. Yeah, and I want, yeah, so honor them for, for what they did and how they gave out so beautifully. And I just want you guys to share, because you guys were praying for them, and they're going to share with you how they could feel your prayers and continue to pray, because people are still there serving. And again, Jesus is our only hope in the world right now. So keep praying for everyone affected. But Esther, just share what God did when you were there. Sharing truly your prayers are so impactful. And I said that this morning. I remember like we're welcoming the refugees like right as they get off the train. And anytime I would tell them that the world was praying for them, I was like, I'm from America and we are praying for you guys. They would immediately start weeping and weeping. And it was so beautiful to see how impactful just a prayer was and how loved they felt in that moment. 
Um, it was beautiful. We watched, seen the Lord do so many things. I remember the second day we were at the train station and there was this older woman came and she didn't speak much English. So I did a lot of charades um, and I was like, Jesus love you. <laughs> and it was beautiful. And as she didn't really speak English, but I was like, Lord, I know that you're going to touch her heart. And so I was like, can I pray for you? And she shook her head. Yes. And immediately as I started praying for her, she started weeping and weeping and weeping. The Holy Spirit was moving in her heart. Her daughter came over and she spoke a little bit of English. So I tried my best to preach the gospel to her. She wanted to give her life to Jesus. It was beautiful. And so got to lead her to the Lord. Her mom was just crying the whole entire time. And so I got to pray over both of them and it was just so beautiful. Wow. Yeah, thank you guys so much for your prayers. Like Jessica said, we really felt it. Uh, there were times where we just felt like grace and peace, and we knew that people back home were praying for us. But, uh, but yeah, this morning I shared a little bit about how some of my favorite moments on the trip, you know, were when we didn't even have a translator, but we would just go and hug these people, and um, they were so broken, but we would hug them, and you could just tell that the peace of God was just exchanged. And then, you know, by the end of that and then not even understanding us, you know, they, they had so much peace and joy and they let us pray with them. And, um, and, you know, I wanted to share a quick testimony. Uh, I think it was the first day we were in the train station and me and Ryan, we were just, you know, looking for people to minister to. And, and we saw a guy, uh, he had a really, really bad limp and his leg almost looked bowed out. And so, you know, I said, Hey bro, look, look at this guy. We went and we tried to pray for him. He didn't speak really English at all, and um, so we did the charades, like Esther was saying, you know, hands together, point up to the sky, and uh, pointed at his leg, and so he's like, yeah, whatever, and so we prayed for him, and he walks off, and we turn around and look, and he shakes out his leg like three times, and then it's completely straight, and he's walking completely normal, yeah. Um, yeah, just as they were so beautifully sharing, um, we truly felt your prayers, and the Prince of Peace and our comfort was, comforter was made manifest. Um, and so it was the third day, and we had the privilege and honor of going to um, the refugee shelter. And when we arrived there, it was like an old mall, and then the inside, everything else was stripped out, and there was cots as far as the eye can see. There was kids running around. Um, and then they had signs, because it wasn't just people from Ukraine, um, it was all different nations. And so there was this mother and child room that we went in and there was guards at the front. And um, I saw the, the Holy Spirit. That's one thing that is super important is to be led by the Spirit, because you can easily get overwhelmed with the need. And so um, I was like, all right, Holy Spirit, highlight who you want me to talk to. And he did. And there was this um, young boy who's 16. He didn't really speak English. So um, we use Google Translator. Amen. And uh, I sat with him. And it was about a little over an hour. The time was just flowing by. You know, um, he really shared with me that his father passed away two months prior. Um, his mama was sick. And she was battling illness. And she, he had an older brother and a younger sister. And they were from Uzbekistan. Um, and they just came. They had absolutely nothing. And so after a little over an hour of talking, um, I was just, do you want to give your life to Jesus? You know, he brought me all the way from the United States just to tell you that he loves you. And that he never stopped will loving you and never will stop pursuing you. And he gave his life to Jesus. Yeah, um, that, that final day at the refugee camp, I mean, it was just, it was overwhelming, you know, to see the need, like she said, and what an honor that we had to just bring the kingdom of heaven there. You know, there's, there's many people that were there that were bringing aid and humanitarian, you know, support, but we had Jesus in us, and, you know, the, the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, 
and through, through turmoil and anxieties and fears that we just got to bring the love of Jesus to them. And there's this young man that um, I got to pray with. I was with actually the translator that was with me and she, I started, I wanted to pray for his wife. She was in a wheelchair. And so as I was trying to communicate, the translator was talking to the husband who was on a bed and as she was just sharing Jesus with him, and I'm trying to share Jesus to the lady in the wheelchair, but, I, you know, the, the, the language barrier was hard. And so she ends up leading this man to the, to the Lord. And I looked at him, and I felt, is there any pain in your body? And while they've walked miles, many of these people walked miles and miles and miles just to get out of the border, just to get out of Ukraine. And so their feet are swollen. They're, you know, they're bloodied and, and blistered. And I mean, there's just so many stories, but I, I felt to pray for him. And his, he said he had, um, his feet, his legs were really swollen and he had um, varicose veins and just a bunch of different stuff going on from walking. And he already had complications. So I told him, can I pray for him? And I prayed for him and I literally felt something leap underneath my hands. And I asked him after, I said, man, he's like, I felt something when you prayed. He said, I feel like I'm healed. He says, I, I, I you know, and he, he couldn't tell in the moment. Uh, but then I felt by the Holy Spirit, he gave his life to the Lord. I just prayed for him to be healed. I said, he needs to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now we're just going to do the whole package. It's just going to happen. He was open to it. So I prayed the fire of heaven over him. And I prayed Jesus encounter him. He said, I felt my spirit being lifted as you prayed for him. So that's what Jesus has been doing. Um, I want you guys to understand you as a church, you're a part of this reward. Do you understand? You're a part of going into these places and sharing the gospel and helping the broken. I remember we were texting back and forth on a thread, me and Michael and Carla and Ryan, and I said, share Jesus and show Jesus because we have to show Jesus. And Heidi Baker has said, and I, I, I believe this because I used to go as a kid to the orphanages with my parents and just help, help the hurting. And she said, there's a side of Jesus you'll never see until you help the broken. And we have to know that any of us could be in a crazy situation, and as a church and as a family, we have to pray for those in need. And I feel like we need to do that right now. And Ryan, I'd love you to lead us, and just if we could just pray as a church right now. Yeah, come on, let's, let's all agree together. Holy Spirit, you see the need. You know the hurt. Father, I pray the compassion of the Holy Spirit to overwhelm us. Father, you said there's no time or spirit or distance in the spirit, Lord. So we even pray now, Lord God, for those who we laid hands on, who we brought Jesus to, Lord Jesus, that you continually to minister to them, Lord. God, we thank you for fruit that remains. Fruit that remains, Heavenly Father. God, we thank you for the impact of the kingdom of God to penetrate the borders of Ukraine, the refugee camps that we've stepped into, Lord. I pray heaven come. You said on earth as it is in heaven. We pray on earth as it is in heaven in those refugee camps in Jesus' name. We pray on earth as it is in heaven at the train station. Father, we pray that you are the great comforter. You are their present help in time of need. You're close to the brokenhearted. Father, I thank you for the comfort of you, Holy Spirit. Cover them and protect them. We plead the blood of Jesus over that nation, over that region, over that country. We plead the blood of Jesus over the children that are waiting in line. We plead the blood of Jesus over families Father, I pray we have your heart. Only you can do it, Lord. So we agree as a church and as a family to their destinies. We say yes and amen. To family restorations, we say yes and amen. To men that are at war, that they come home safely in Jesus' name. God, you're a father to the fatherless. You're a friend that sticks closer than a brother. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for your blood and for your spirit. In your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah.
Just tell them you love them. They're amazing. So, so proud of them. Um, Amy, if you can come up, I want to give you a quick update about Michael. He wanted me to show you this picture. So if we have that, you can share it. Do we have it? Okay, there he is. I made a joke this morning. This was pre-surgery afterwards. He was more like, uh, like, you know, but it's, this was right before, but he's doing great. So I want to share with you that the doctor came out and he said, I expect him to make a full recovery. He did amazing. So thank you so much for your prayers. As many of you guys know, uh, just overuse and misuse, and he had some um, just issues on his vocal cords, but the doctor said he should be better than new. He's resting, he's recovering, and he'll probably be back in a very short time, back on this pulpit, preaching the gospel. And God is so faithful. He's so faithful. You know, no one likes walking through things like this. They're not fun. But if you don't have Jesus, what do you have? And he was so close through the entire situation. And I just love my husband. I know you guys love him too, but I'm so happy that God is with him and he's getting stronger every day and he sends his love. So thank you so much for your prayers. He's doing great. And well, let's welcome Amy right now. After you hear that, you can't help but be thankful that we get to be in this room, sit in these comfortable chairs, and worship the Lord freely. And so we're going to move into a time of offering today. And I want to read from Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, if you want to turn there. And it says, do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. And this is Jesus speaking. And I couldn't help but think we sang today Take this world and give me Jesus. You can have this world, just give me Jesus. Because there's no heavenly value for what we obtain in this life. When we stand before the Lord, we're going to wish we'd given him more. I guarantee we're going to wish we gave him more. And that's in our time. That's in what we give towards others, just like the team went. They gave of their time and also of our resources, of our finances, to the church and our tithe, but our offering to those that are in need, those people in Ukraine, that person you pass by in the street. And our treasure is connected to our heart. Jesus says, where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. So our finances, our time, our treasure is directly connected to our heart. And so I just invite the Holy Spirit to ask us today as we prepare to bring our offering to him, that he would speak to us. We give him our tithe, our 10%, but maybe he's speaking to you now to give more today to give radically, to give generously, above and beyond, because he's worthy. And so Jesus, I just ask that you would speak today. I really feel like he's gonna speak to you some of today, some of you today to give, to give above, to give generously, because he's been so good, because we have a bed to go home and lay on tonight. He's given us everything. It's all from him. So it's an honor to give right back to you, Jesus. We want our heart to match. We want our heart to line up with what's truly of value to us, Jesus. And it's you. 
So Holy Spirit, speak. I thank you for everyone that's in the room, that's watching online, that you would speak to us, Jesus that we would be quick to give. We would be quick to give to you first and foremost, but to those in need. Let our hearts be moved with compassion today, Lord. We give freely back to you today in Jesus' name. Amen. If you need an envelope, if you're in the room, you can lift up your hands and our ushers will come and bring you an envelope. If you're watching online, you can text to give the number on your screen. If you're in the room, you can text the number on your screen. And there's also a QR code that you can take a picture of that. It'll take you right to our website to give. And we will be back in just a minute. You can rush the buckets. Thy name, glorify thy name, glorify thy name in all the earth. We love you, we worship and adore, glorify, glorify thy name in all the his name. Glorify his name in all Don't you see Jesus when you look at that man? 
<laughs> every time. Um, yeah, we're going to go into a time of communion, and we might go into worship again. We're going to let the Holy Spirit lead tonight. Is that good with you guys? Yeah, if we can have um, the people that are doing communion come up. And just prepare your heart right now. If you're watching online, we invite you to get your elements ready so you can take communion with us. I believe God is going to heal people, but I know that Jesus is going to be so near. Communion is his nearness. It's us with Jesus, and God is going to touch you wherever you are. So prepare your hearts right now. And if you need a communion, please like, um, raise your hand and we will get it to you. There's some people over here that need it, so just keep your hands up high, and our team will come and bring it to you. I just keep hearing in my spirit, everything is under the king's domain. I'm going to read from John 19, 17. And he, bearing his cross, went out to a place called the place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, one on either side and Jesus in the center. Now Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Then many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Therefore, the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. Jesus, you are king. You are king and you always will be. Everything is under the king's domain. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Take the body, let's lift it high, as he was lifted high for us. Your body, Jesus, hung up on that tree. The Bible says that cursed is any man who hangs upon the tree. You took the curse. Thank you, Lord that every sickness has to bow at the name of Jesus, King Jesus, that every mind has to come under the submission of King Jesus, every will. Thank you, Jesus, for your Lordship. You are King of Kings. You are Lord of Lords. And we lift your body high. We thank you that it was broken for us, Lord. You broke your, the bread of your body. Thank you, Lord. We receive you tonight. And in you, we receive our healing. We receive our wholeness. We receive you, Prince of Peace, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Jesus, you are worthy. Let's receive the bread of his body together. Thank you, Jesus. But Christ came as high priest of good things to come, with greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more should the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And so Jesus, as the great high priest, you entered into the most holy with your own perfect blood 
and you poured your blood out on the mercy seat, separating our sins as far as the east is from the west, cleansing us once and for all, perfecting those who are for sanctifying. And we just thank you, Jesus, for every drop of your blood that you poured out your life for us so that we can be forgiven and that we could be cleansed. And I just plead your blood over every person in this room, over every person watching on the live stream. I plead your blood. And we just thank you, Jesus, for every benefit of your blood, for every healing, for every deliverance, for every person, God, being touched by your very own life. And we give you all the glory and we thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. Amen. You may partake. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. yeah, we just wanna pray for you real quick. If there's anyone that's sick in body, we're believing that Jesus is gonna heal you right now. So come on, let's pray as a church. Lord, I thank you that your healing power will flow right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for everyone that is sick in body, Lord, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, they'll be healed right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that healing is the children's bread and we receive it by faith right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. There's somebody that you have a vertebrae issue and Jesus is touching your vertebrae. If there's anyone in the room that you have an issue with your vertebrae, if you can just wave your hand at me. You can wave it high, okay. If you're watching online, this is for you too. There's no distance with the Holy Spirit. If you're by someone that has an issue in the vertebrae, if it's okay with them, just ask if you can lay your hands on them or just stretch your hands. Let's pray right now. Lord, we command this issue with the vertebrae to go right now in Jesus' name. All pain in the name of Jesus go we thank you father glaucoma go right now in the name of Jesus I thank you father by your stripes they are made whole in the name of Jesus I thank you father tendinitis is there anyone in the room that has tendinitis if you can just wave at me so I can see you okay so I see, I see people in the back there's several come on church just lift your hands and stretch them to those people it's Jesus that heals. Just receive your healing right now by faith. We speak to that tendonitis and we command it to go right now in the name of Jesus. All pain go. Joint issues, your pain go right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father. Lymphoma, go right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you. There's somebody with a leg condition. You have like, it, it gets sleepy all the time and it gets stiff on one side of your body. Is there anyone in the room that has a leg condition just wave at me there's somebody over, okay there's somebody right there yeah you have a condition in your leg and it gets stiff and numb Lord I thank you for healing these legs right now in the name of Jesus all pain must go right now in the name of Jesus we thank you father for your blood thank you God in Jesus' name, just start to do something by faith that you couldn't do before. Just, just start to activate your faith. I want to release our team as well. If God has, has given you anything, I want you to share it. And just as they're sharing, even if they haven't called out your condition, Jesus is the healer. We don't do anything. We're just yielded vessels. Jesus is the one who heals. And he is right here. And he wants to heal you right now. So just activate your faith and believe. Yeah, I just got um, a band around your head like you get migraines daily, and it's like a band. So if there's anyone in here that gets daily migraines, yeah, if there's anyone, it's someone in the back right there. Okay, yeah, Lord, we just thank you right now in Jesus' name. We plead the blood of Jesus that every migraine will cease in the name of Jesus, that no more will she ever have to deal with these migraines, no more headaches. Even anyone watching online, if you get regular headaches or just migraines, they will bow its name at the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over them right now. Thank you, Lord. I also got back pain, specifically like right here. If anyone has back pain right now, 
Okay, two people over there. Anyone? Wow, a lot of you guys. All right, Lord, we just thank you so much for all back pain to go right now. No more, no more, Lord, will they have to suffer with this. Lord, we thank you so much, Lord, by his stripes on his back, they are healed, Father. So we plead the blood, we believe it. You said it is finished. So right now we thank you, no more back pain in the name of Jesus. And then I got one more. Um, I specifically saw like a picture, like the doctor told you that whatever your disease was is incurable. So if anyone had ever like, that could be eczema, fibromyalgia, that could be just like an intestinal issue, any like incurable or the doctor said like, we don't know what to do with it. If there was anyone in here that's gotten that news. Okay, one right there, a couple. Could you guys wave your hand, like wave it? All right, right now, Lord, we just thank you. We come against that word right now. We thank you that you are completely healed, that you are the healer, Lord. You are the healer, Jesus, and by his stripes, you are healed, Lord. We thank you for freedom, Lord, and we just plead the blood of Jesus that we rebuke any of those words spoken, that it is not incurable, it is curable because you are the curable healer, Lord. You cure every disease, you take away every every sickness, every disease, Lord. So we thank you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for their healing. We thank you for their healing, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, and earlier I heard a uh, hernia. Does anyone in here have a hernia in their stomach, in any part of their body? Anyone with a hernia? One, okay, two. All right, so Lord, I just pray in the name of Jesus, that this damage to this skin would be healed right now in Jesus' name. I just command every bit of a hole in their stomach and wherever their body is, I just command it to close right now in the name of Jesus. And we command this hernia to leave in Jesus' name and never return in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And the second thing, I don't even know if you could be here and have this, but you might have a relative or somebody online, but I heard uh, appendicitis. Does anyone have anything wrong with their appendix in here? Or you have a family member that is dealing with something with their appendix in the back? All right, so we'll pray for that. So Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for a brand new appendix in Jesus name. We command whatever is wrong with this appendix, we command it to be healed right now in Jesus name. And we speak brand new, brand new, brand new in Jesus mighty name. And we thank you for 100% healing in this appendix, God, in Jesus name. And the next thing I heard was scoliosis. Uh, does anybody in here have scoliosis or a curvature in your spine? All right, you can stand up. All right, so thank you, Father. Lord, we just thank you, God, for perfect alignment in these people's backs. God, we pray that everything come into perfect alignment, God. Everything come into a perfect alignment with its original design, that there be no curvature of the spine, that there be a natural curve the way it's supposed to be, that you would align every vertebrae, God, all the way down their back, God, that everything would come into alignment right now in Jesus' name. We pray that they would have completely pain-free, that they would have no pain in their back in Jesus' mighty name. And the last thing I heard was temporal. So I don't know, it might go with what Amy was saying, that temporal headaches maybe, temporal or maybe uh, dementia, I don't know. But just something with the, temp the temple, something with headaches or something like that. Is there anything that anybody has pain in their temple or headaches? Okay, one. All right, so let's pray. So Heavenly Father, we just command this pain to leave right now in Jesus' name. I command every bit of tension in the temporal lobe, I command it to leave right now in the name of Jesus. And I pray that there would be a release in Jesus' name and that there would be peace that comes upon their head and that they would have no more of these uh, tension headaches in Jesus' name, that they, she would be completely pain-free from this day forward in Jesus' name, God. And we thank you, Lord. Amen. Now we're going to keep going into this, but if anyone is healed from something we've called out, can you just stand up if God has healed your body, if you're feeling better in any area? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, you can stand up. Thank you, Lord. Ma'am, what happened? When you called out numbness in the legs, it's my right leg. If it doesn't have any pain or any. Thank you, Jesus. 
Come on, when we celebrate, when we share testimony, we're saying, do it again, Lord. Who else? All the pain is gone. Anything that we called out in the room, I saw a couple. Like, can you, yes, what happened? Um, as y'all were praying for my back, um, I just felt like just a coolness on my back and peace on my body. And I feel renewed. Is the pain gone? Yeah, Thank definitely. you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody over here? Yeah, what happened? You're one of our students. We love you. <laughs> so this morning, um, I was on camera, and my back started to really hurt. That happens normally. And um, two of you guys called out back pain in the very center of the back, and that's where it normally is. And my roommate, Emmanuel, prayed for me, and I don't feel any more pain. <laughs> My sister, Alicia, who works with us, also got healed of back pain during worship tonight. She said all the pain is gone. Thank you, Jesus. If you have back pain, clearly the Lord is touching backs right now. If you have back pain in the room of any kind, stand up and we want to pray for you back pain. If you're watching online, come on, get in on this. Jesus is touching his people. If you're near them, can you just lay hands on them if they're okay with that or stretch your hands? Come on, let's pray about this back pain. Dion, I want you to pray over back pain. All right. Thank you, Father. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we command every bit of back pain to leave right now in Jesus' name. We command every bit of inflammation to leave the back in Jesus' name. We command every spine to come into alignment, every vertebrae to come into alignment. We command every disc to be healed right now in Jesus' name. And 100% restoration to every back that every bit of pain leave right now in the name of Jesus. And we just speak peace and relaxing of the tendons, of the muscles around the back, around the spine. We command you to loosen right now in Jesus' name. We command the hips to come into alignment in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you, God, in Jesus' mighty name. So if you guys want to test out your back and move your back around, bend, twist, and wave your hands if you feel less pain or you've been healed. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'll do that again. If God healed you from back pain, wave your hands up high. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is so faithful. I had like some pain right under the bone here in the wrist. I don't know if, it, if it's arthritis pain or if it's something like that, but I specifically felt the, the left wrist. Is that anybody in here? If you have some pain in your left wrist yeah let's pray yeah thank you Jesus you are king you are healer we command that pain to leave in the name of Jesus all joint pain leave I thank you Lord for full movement in in that wrist complete healing your peace flow through their body in Jesus name amen amen how does it feel? Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I also, this one's pretty specific. I felt the right ear, like, like it's clogged, like almost when you get off a plane and, and your ear is stopped up. Um, I, I feel like it might be like a fluid buildup and you might have like struggle with vertigo because of it. Is that anybody in here? Yeah. Will you guys actually stand up? Yeah, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for healing that ear in Jesus' name that it will unstop. In Jesus' name, clarity in hearing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for ears to hear. Thank you, Lord, that there will be no more fluid, nothing in that eardrum that doesn't belong. We thank you, Jesus, for that. Amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Um, 
And, and one more thing was, it was with the mind as well. I feel like there's something, but like this was specifically with like clarity, like almost like brain fog. And like you felt like you haven't been able to get your, your thoughts together or gathered. Um, I felt that really strongly. So if that's you, if you, if you wouldn't mind raising your hand so we can pray for you for that. Yeah, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. We thank you for a sound mind in Jesus' name for clarity, for clarity that there will be no more fogginess. I thank you, Lord. I hear him say the fog has lifted. In Jesus' name, we proclaim that. Thank you for clarity in thoughts. Thank you, Lord, that this will not come back, that this has no say in their bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, so I actually got four things, and funny enough, it was lower back specifically, um, like with a lot of seat sitting. Um, so I know we already prayed for back, so yes and amen to that. Um, yeah, so if, if you do have lower back pain, specifically in the lumbar, uh, raise your hand. Okay, stand. Again, <laughs> yeah, so yes and amen to your will, Lord. In the name of Jesus, lower backs be completely healed. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Amen. Um, can you guys test it out? Again, maybe bend over. Do some twisting. Angela, you got healed? Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anyone, anyone else significantly better? Thank you, Lord. Um, and, then I, and then I got uh, uh, double vision. Like specifically at night, maybe when you're driving, uh, you, you, it is, it's hard for you to see clearly. If that's you, can you raise your hand and stand up? Yes, yeah, so Lord, we say clarity in the name of Jesus. Eyes come into alignment in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that as they drive home tonight, they will see clearly. They will see one vision, not die vision, but one vision in the name of Jesus. And then, uh, yeah, again, weirdly enough, wrist. Um, so specifically, I got on the left wrist, when you touch your pinky and thumb together, it's painful. I don't know, maybe really specific, but is that anyone in the room? Wow. Amen. Can you stand? Yeah, Father, I thank you that you even healed Peter's mother-in-law of a fever. There's nothing too small for you, nothing too insignificant for you. I thank you, Lord, that I, we, in the name of Jesus, we command this pain and this discomfort to leave right now in Jesus' name. Can, can you test it out? Better, worse, a little better? Okay, can, can, let's pray again, guys. Yeah, in Jesus' name, I plead the blood of Jesus over you. I thank you that we have access to full healing in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Amen. Try it again. Wow. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Um, and then the last thing I got was uh, really specific, uh, Lyme's disease. I don't really know what that is, but is there, is there anyone that actually has Lyme's disease in here? Or maybe they know someone? You do? Okay, awesome. Can you guys stand up on behalf of them? Yeah. Um, let's just stretch our hands. In Jesus' name, Lyme's disease, we curse you. We command you to go by the power and authority in the name of Jesus. Be gone and be completely healed and whole. 
In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. I just felt in worship that there were people with joint pain. It wasn't just one specific area, but all through your body. You could feel it in your knees, in your hips, in your shoulders. If anyone has joint pain, could you just hold your hand up? Could we just stand? And then I also felt a pain behind the right knee where it's hard for you to extend your knee. If you can stand as well. All right, all across the room. And we say in Jesus' name, by your stripes, we are made whole in Jesus' name. There's nothing too small. I just felt in worship that he wanted us to be able to worship free and not be in pain anymore. So in Jesus' name, that we will worship free and free indeed. In Jesus' name, amen. If we can go ahead and test that out and test out the knee pain as well. If you feel about 50 to 80% better. Okay. bad, I guess, inflammation in, in the joint of my jaw. I don't know if it's TMJ or what it, what it is, but um, it was really hard for me to like open my mouth all the way to eat. It was excruciating pain, like shooting up through my eye, and it's completely gone, like right now. And then I felt two more things, both with the mind. I felt like there were people in here, I felt this morning with weariness, like really heaviness weighing down on you. And then I also felt that there was someone, you could be in the room, but I felt specifically online with postpartum depression, that the Lord um, wants to heal you and bring you joy because your baby is a gift. And I felt that, that nothing should be robbing your joy and it is not normal. And the Lord wants to give you joy as well as the person with weariness weariness and with heaviness, the Lord wants to restore joy. So if you know someone um, with postpartum depression or you are feeling weariness or know someone with heavy, heavy weariness, if you can just stand up, we wanna pray for you. We say the fullness of joy in Jesus' name. We break every chain, every bondage, all depression, all anxiety has to bow to the name of Jesus, Lord. Just like you healed me and made me whole, Lord, you are no respecter of person. And we thank you, Jesus, that everyone in this room and everyone watching online will be made completely whole and have fullness of joy. And I felt specifically with the mother with postpartum depression that you're going to go to bed tonight and wake up tomorrow morning with more joy than you've had in years. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Um, I just have one, and it's a very specific thing. There's someone in the room that you had a car accident, and your body's doing okay physically, but the trauma of the accident, it still affects you deeply. If there's anyone in the room that has had an accident, and you're still dealing with the, the okay, there's some over here. Is there, stand up so we can see you. Okay. Yeah. God wants to heal you. If I felt like there's trauma in the mind because of it, and God is going to set you free tonight. If you're just near them, if you can stretch your hands, and if you're watching online, and this is you as well, God's going to touch you. Lord, I thank you that all trauma and fear because of this accident will go right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for peace, Jesus, your supernatural peace that surpasses all understanding. I thank you, God, that the fear of getting into another accident will go to tonight in Jesus name. I thank you, Father, that you commission your angels around them, God, wherever they go. And I thank you, God, that that peace will never leave them in Jesus name. Lord, no more dreams. There's even people that you have dreams about this accident because it's affected you so deeply. Lord, I thank you, God, you're restoring their rest again, Jesus, and these dreams will stop in Jesus name. They will only have heavenly dreams in the name of Jesus, Lord. No more trauma in Jesus name. I thank Thank you, Father. All trauma goes right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Yeah, I believe you're going to go home and you're going to realize that the trauma has completely lifted. If I could have, we're going to go into a moment of worship. You guys can stay up with me and just pray. 
Um, I wanted to just speak to a few people in the room tonight. I had a dream about this a couple nights ago, and and we called this forth um, this morning. And we're going to close in a moment. I feel God is going to heal some people. We can just have John. That's fine, too. Ban, I love you. But you can just be praying. But if you've ever been hurt by ministry, if you grew up in ministry, can we all stand for a moment? If you grew up in ministry, maybe your family was in ministry, maybe your your parents were pastors, maybe you were married to a minister, but specifically if you have hurt in your heart because of ministry and you haven't been able to get over it, I want to invite you down right now to the altar. God is going to set you free. If you want to come down her hurt of abandonment, anything to do specifically with ministry. And then I also wanted to invite people down that have bitterness and offense in your heart. God bless you. If you have any offense in your heart and you're still holding on to offense, come down here. God bless you. And if we can have our prayer team, if you have any offense in your heart, it could be specifically for ministry related things, but any offense and you haven't been able to let go of it, God is going to set you free tonight in Jesus name Jesus is so faithful people are not always dependable but Jesus is always dependable the word says he will never leave you nor forsake you he is faithful he never loves with condition he loves us unconditionally and I'm believing tonight that God is going to restore the way you see him there's even people that maybe you don't have a relationship with your earthly father maybe your relationship with your earthly father or maybe your past has been broken, but Jesus is going to restore the way that you look at him because he's not like people. He's holy and he loves you so much. So yeah, there's still, if you still want to come down, there's room, we'll make room. But yeah, and we're going to go into a time of worship and we're going to have the prayer team over here, please, and just pray for people. Yeah, let's pray right now. Come on, church, and we'll, if you still want to come down, we're going to start praying, but God is going to touch you. Lord, I thank you for all these people, God, that are dealing with any hurt in their heart, Jesus. Any hurt, God, related to ministry of any kind, Lord. Lord, any bitterness, God, any fear, God, any offense, Lord, we thank you right now. We give it to you in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that any offense goes right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, Lord, who the sun sets free is free indeed. And I thank you, God, all fear, all offense goes right now in Jesus name we thank you for the blood of Jesus God that covers come on church come agree with me I thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers us that sets us free I thank you Jesus for the blood for the blood of Jesus Lord that covers all offense I thank you Jesus that covers our minds that covers our thoughts Lord we give you our offense God we give you our pain we lay it at your feet your word says to cast our cares upon you because you care for us and we give those burdens to you right now in Jesus name I thank you all the memories God of the past that are not from you go right now in Jesus name I thank you God fear of man dies tonight in the name of Jesus I thank you God you set us free Lord and we stand on your word where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom so we speak freedom right now to your mind in the name of Jesus thank you father to the altar all who are hungry and empty come be filled come to the master bring your disaster and let your heart be healed his arms are open for all who are broken he makes all Where all you can offer is you Come to Jesus Come to Jesus Come to Jesus He makes it all Come 
Jesus, we thank you for every heart that has been healed in this room tonight. Holy Spirit, only you can go deep within. So, Father, we thank you for everything that took place tonight in your presence. We stay in this place of worship. We stay in this place of surrender. And we say yes and amen to everything. It is sealed by the Holy Spirit. Jesus, we thank you for every healing. We thank you for every salvation. We thank you for every mended heart. Healed heart. Minds that were healed. We say thank you, Lord. In your precious, beautiful name. Amen. We're, dis- we're going to dismiss, but obviously you guys could stay in this place of worship with the Lord. And the Lord is touching you guys. Just let him touch you. He's here. There's no transitions in the spirit. It's just worshiping him differently in a different way. So we love you guys. We will see you guys next week. You guys are dismissed. On Michael and Jess here, we are standing on the exact location where the headquarters for Jesus Image will be. Local church, Jesus School, uh, House of Bethany, all of that will be located right here. In fact, in the exact spot where Jesse and I are standing will be the beautiful pond in front of the sanctuary where we will most likely be holding baptism services occasionally. So we're so excited. We're right here in Seminole County off of Lake Mary Boulevard. We own this land. God owns this land, I should say. And the building will be right behind us. The sanctuary, the admin building, and the prayer house. And so listen, we just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for giving. Thank you for praying. Thank you for being so patient and believing with us. We're believing God that the nations will descend on this property, that they will worship Jesus, that the sick will be healed here, that the lost will be saved, that the presence and glory of God will rest here. We want that. We believe this is holy ground and that the tangible glory of Jesus will be right here on this land. And so we want to invite you to come and invite you to be a part of what God is going to do here. Yeah, we are just so very thankful for you. Thank you so much for your prayers and your love and support. We are truly blown away with what the Lord is doing and we cannot wait to have you here with us one day. Yeah, and we're really excited about what we're gonna show you right now. We wanna take you on a journey and show you the incredible design, detail, and vision of what will take place on this property. Our Jesus Image home will be located in the beautiful Seminole County right off of Lake Mary Boulevard. This is a thriving area filled with families, restaurants, and the beautiful amenities that this area provides. The vision of this property is simple. We want the presence of Jesus Christ to be known. We have a deep value for experiencing the Lord in His beauty and the majesty of His creation. This facility will host our local church family, Jesus School, which is our discipleship training program yearly conferences, the Bethany House of Prayer, and it will also be an outreach hub for the state and nation. There is vision behind everything. The location of the buildings, the landscaping, the water features, and of course the architectural design of the buildings themselves all speak to the beauty of the Lord. We want all who enter the property to feel as though they've entered into the peace of the presence of God. With all the stress and turmoil that people face on a daily basis, this will be a place of serenity, worship, reflection, and adoration. Rather than this feeling like a headquarters, we want this to be the house of God and a home for His people. You will notice that the structures themselves have a timeless look and design. From the stonework to the stained glass, it will feel like the house of God. The gospel will be declared from every side of the property in multiple different ways. 
As you pull into the new Jesus Image home, you will discover a massive parking area that will be framed by and filled with beautiful shrubbery and trees. There will be plenty of room for you and your family. A beautiful drive leads you to the sanctuary building. You will enter through a stone archway. Upon the archway, one of the foundational verses for Jesus' image will be inscribed. This verse carries the heartbeat of our lives and the construction of this house. Only one thing is needed, Luke 10, 42. Upon entering the front door to the main building, you will see a massive gathering area. It is a two-story structure. The first level will be filled with life. This will be a place to congregate with friends and family, to get your children checked into Children's Church, to eat, or simply enjoy a coffee around a beautiful fireplace. The first level will also house the youth room. We have a major focus on seeing this next generation love Jesus. The youth room will seat approximately 500 people. This room will also serve as the second year facility for Jesus School. Our children's rooms will be located on the first level. This will be a convenient experience for children and parents upon their arrival. Our children will receive amazing Bible teaching, a worship experience, and knowledge of the presence of the Holy Spirit for themselves. The second level of the main building will facilitate working spaces for our board of directors, our staff, and interns. This will be a great blessing for us as we move forward in wisdom as a ministry. As you know, God has graced Jesus' image with a massive reach through media. Thousands have come to Jesus, and so many have been healed and set free through our media ministry. We will have our very own production studio where we can create content and continue to stream live to the nations. We will release podcasts, social media content, videos, and much more. Multiplied millions have watched our media content, and we believe our creative team will flourish in this new space as they step out into this vital and anointed calling. As you walk across the main gathering space, you will discover the sanctuary. What an amazing space this will be. While we will have state-of-the-art technology in the sanctuary, the space will take you back in time, a time when churches had a sacred feel to them. You will discover beautiful stained glass behind the platform. Stained glass will line the sides of the sanctuary as well, all telling the gospel story of Jesus. There will be timeless wood beaming and stonework throughout. We long for his presence to fill this place, and it will be a home for you as well. We will seat approximately 1,500 people, yet it will not lose the personal feel that we so deeply value. The platform will be spacious with plenty of room for ministry, our worship teams, and of course, a baptismal. You will notice a round stained glass image on the back wall of the sanctuary depicting a dove in fire descending in the room. May the Holy Spirit fill our hearts each time we gather as a church family. The sanctuary space will also serve Jesus School. This will house our hundreds of first year students as well as our general school sessions. These students will be missionaries to the nations of the world and to their generation. The gospel will be declared from this sanctuary space multiple times per week and people will be raised up from this place to share Jesus with the world. May millions be saved, healed, and touched by the Holy Spirit. Lastly, for our favorite space on the property, the Bethany House of Prayer. This will be the prayer house for Jesus' image. It will be a place for adoration, silent prayer, reflecting upon the scriptures, and worship. You will notice that the house will be built upon a pond. The setting will be quaint and breathtaking. Stone and wood mark the space with warmth and a traditional look that we believe will transcend generations. We believe this will be the hub of the entire property, a place where intimacy with God and pure prayer ascend before Him. It is named the Bethany House because Bethany was the place where Jesus was loved deeply. Therefore, He rested there. Mary found the better part, and it is our prayer that all who enter will find Jesus there and fall in love with Him. May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May he be adored and worshiped on this property.
May his word be taught with clarity, boldness, and love. May his gospel flood the nations, and may the generations to come find him here. Will you stand with us? Will you pray and give toward this vision? Will you give sacrificially for the sake of Jesus and his gospel? Will you be a part of something that will outlive you for the sake of eternity? Thank you. We love you. Jesus is beautiful.